Now, chapter seven is about conic sections, uh, things like circles and ellipses. We are going to focus on them. Uh, quadratics don't completely go away, um, so make sure that um, uh, if you were stuck on some of the things that we had covered under chapter six, uh, now would be a good time to review that. Um, today we're going to work on the eight problems that you see in front of you. I am going to do four of them and you were going to do four of them and they are to be turned in as soon as our Google Meet or the half hour is done. So at 1045 you're going to turn these in, okay? So we're going to do four of them and then uh, I'm going to pause and you're going to work on the other four of them and if anybody gets stuck I'll still be sitting in the Google Meet for you to work um, on them. Now to solve a quadratic there are really two main ways that we had talked about. So uh, let's open this up. Let's do uh, four of these together. I'm going to do these odd ones right here. Okay. Now, um, you can solve it one of two ways. You can try to factor it into two pieces and then split it apart into two things. Another option is you can use the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now I want to talk about the quadratic formula a little bit because I noticed on the uh, test there were some pretty common mistakes. So let me write it up here in the corner. So you can solve every single one of these problems um, using the quadratic formula if you want. Now, if you like factoring and you want to try to factor it, feel free to try to factor it, okay? But one of the things that I noticed when doing the quadratic formula here, that many of you, when you squared this piece, it was that piece right there that really threw a lot of you. When you square any number, any real number, you will always get a positive. So some of you had a negative sitting, like you put in a negative 4. When you square that, that becomes a positive 16. So you got to remember that this square makes anything that we put into it a positive number. Okay, so that was one of the main mistakes I saw when using the quadratic formula. So feel free to complete any of these with the quadratic formula. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few of them with factoring. I'm going to do a few of them with uh, the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's start now and do together problem number one. Now, if I decide I want to try to factor it, I am looking for pieces that multiply together to give me x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now to find those pieces, what you're asking yourself is what are the factors of 8 that add up to 6? Well, 8 is 8 and 1, that adds up to 9, or 4 and 2. 4 and 2 adds up to 6. So where do you place that? Well, that's going to be x plus 4 and x plus 2. Now how do you check that we're right? 4 times 2 should be 8 x times x should be x squared, and then the inners and outers, 4x plus 2x, should equal the 6x in the middle. So if you multiply it out, foil it out, distribute it out, you should get x squared plus 6x plus 8, which we do, so we know we factored it right. Now from there, remember to keep going, we're going to set each piece individually equal to 0 and solve. Well, the x plus 4 piece, when it's set equal to 0, gives us negative 4. When the x plus 2 piece is set equal to 0, when we subtract 2 from both sides, we get negative 2. So you have two solutions here, negative 4 and negative 2. Okay? So that's how you would solve it using factorization. Now, if you're not particularly good at factoring, feel free to go another route. So you can always jump back to the quadratic formula. But of course you have to apply it right. Okay. Now let's look at number three. I'm going to factor this one more time. I'm going to use slide and divide. Now I noticed uh, some of you use slide divide on the test 
and you did it well, and others of you forgot one little piece of it, which kind of threw it off. So let's talk about number three. Let's do slide and divide. To slide and divide, I am going to take any front coefficient and slide it over and multiply by the back co constant. So I'm going to have x squared plus 3x minus 40. And then I'm going to do a similar technique I did with number one. I'm going to say, what are the factors of 40? But this time, because this is a minus, that subtract to give us a 3 in the middle. So, well, 8 and 5 multiply to give us 40, but have a subtraction of 3. So that's what we want. So we need a positive 8 and a negative 5. Now let's talk about the signs because there were some assigned mistakes on the test. If the back is negative, then automatically one is positive and one is negative. And just look to the middle and that's where your bigger number should be. Your bigger number should be positive. My 8 is the bigger number. It's the positive. The other one is the negative. Okay. And then we're going to remember this is the part some of you forgot. We slid over a 2. So this part's the slide, but you've got to remember to do the divide. We slid over a 2, so now we have to divide by 2. Now, if it's divisible by 2, divide it, like 8 is divisible by 2. If it's not divisible by 2, remember, stick the 2 on the x. And now we're going to solve each one independently. So x plus 4 equals 0 gives me negative 4. 2x minus 5 equals 0. I would add 5, divide by 2, I get two answers, negative 4 and positive 5 halves. So if you see a way to factor it, feel free to use factorization, fine by me. Okay, But let's say it doesn't seem to want to factor or you're just really not good at factoring. Let's do number 5, let's use the quadratic formula. So for number five, first, if you're going to use a quadratic, let me write it over here on the corner here. So it's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2as. Okay. Now, so what are we going to do? Well, our a value, some people put when they didn't see an a value, they put zero. The a value on the x squared, if you don't see it, is technically a one. My B value is negative 7. My C value is 22. Now, let's plop the information into the formula. Now, watch very carefully how I do this. So, I'm going to get the opposite of negative 7, which is positive 7, plus or minus the square root of. Now, when I square a negative 7, it does not stay negative. It becomes a positive 49. And then I have a negative 4, or a minus 4, however you want to think about it, times the a value of 1 times the c value of 22. It's going to stay negative. All over 2 a's, which is double 1, which is 2. Now, do this next. Get an actual number there. We get 7 plus or minus the square root of... 39, uh, negative 39. And one other thing you guys forgot, some of you forgot, is that if a negative appears underneath a radical, that we should remove it and write an i in its place. And since the uh, 39 is not a perfect square, it doesn't contain any perfect squares, just leave it. It is. You're done. That's as far as you have to go. Okay? So that is our answer for number Five. Now, let's use the quadratic formula for number 7. Same idea. Our a is 1, our b is 2, our c is 1. Now, let's go ahead and plop into the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Minus 4 times 1 times 1 is minus 4 all over 2 a's. So we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. Now the square root of 0 is just 0. So if I add 0 or subtract 0, it's not going to do anything different. So it's just negative 2 divided by 2, or the answer is negative 1.
That's what happens when you're discriminant, when your square root is equal to zero. Okay? So you have four problems to do in the next um, 17 minutes, okay? By 1045, please uh, put this uh, finished in Google Classroom where it says get ready for chapter 7. And then on Thursday when we have our uh, Google Meet, we will do our um, 7.1 notes. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much. And I'm going to stick around in case you need me. Um, I'll be here till 1045 in case you were stuck on any or want any help. Okay. Thanks, guys.